pleased to be joined by all three members. Now, you see two of them here right now. All three members of the BMW group, the uh, Blanks, Mays, Wright group that was part of the 1990 Elite Eight team 25 years ago for the Texas Longhorns. Texas women's associate head coach Travis Mays and also Longhorn Network analyst Lance Blanks with us. And joining us right now from Australia, the head coach of the Adelaide 36ers, Joey Wright, who's with us as well. Now, Joey, if I, if this is very early in the morning, your time. So, you, you, I, you know, have you, I guess you've adjusted the time frame okay since you've been over there. Yeah, I adjusted to the time frame, and uh, we we actually had a big loss last night, so you don't get much sleep in the playoff after playoff loss. So I'm up anyway. All right, now you guys, uh, Travis and, and Lance, uh, you were, you were teammates with him. This it's been 25 years. Uh, Travis, you and I were talking about this last night. Does it seem like it's been 25 years since the, since that Elite Eight run of 1990? Absolutely not. So when you say 25 years, it's incredible for me to think that I've been out of college for 25 years. I don't know if that makes you feel old, Lance, but man. What about you, Lance? <laughs> I am old. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, I am, but I'm not. It is. Tw 25 years, it's just yeah. amazing how quickly it's gone by. Uh, Travis has done a great job of keeping himself in amazing shape, so uh, that's nice to see, and that, that sometimes makes you get a a memory back to the past, but yeah, it's it's been quite a while since we ran up and down that court. How about you, Joey? Does it seem like it's been 25 years since that uh, Elite Eight run? No, not at all. You know, sometimes you think about it, you know, the times we had going to play ball and some of the antics we got up to, it definitely don't seem like it was 25 years ago. What What are the things, Joey, that stand out to you about that 1990 team and that, and that run to the Elite Eight? You know, I've, you know, I've been around basketball teams ever since then, and one of the things I took for granted probably at the time that I know is, is really hard to come by, when I stepped out on that basketball court with Lance and Travis, I knew it was two guys thinking exactly like I was thinking um, mentally, physically. Um, they had my back whether I missed every shot or hit every shot. They were right there with me. And you just kind of took that for granted, and I never really found that in a basketball team that I – I um, played in after that. I've coached a few teams with some guys like that, but I hadn't found a guy, you know, two guys I just counted on, you know, no matter what. I just knew they were there. I hear. You know, uh, w one thing that comes to mind, Joey, is the fact that it seemed like everybody was comfortable no matter who was taking the shot. Now, there was always competition amongst you who was going to be taking the shot, but that everybody seemed comfortable knowing that one of you probably would make the shot, right? Yeah, you know, I knew on any given night two of the three was getting hot. Two of the three was going going, going to find their rhythm at some point in time. Um, and if all three of us found it, then watch out. And, you know, we had some nights like that as well. But, you know, on any given night, two of the three, and, and if two of the three didn't, you better believe one of us stood up and, and took, took the shots and made them for the other two. And uh, we, we always found a way. Uh, Lance, how much competition was there between the three of you as to who was going to be doing the shooting? Uh, I think there was friendly and unspoken um, competition, if you will. Uh, the, the thing that we did, I think, a great job of is challenging each other in our own ways and competing together versus against each other. Uh, at the same time, though, I've always teased Travis about the fact that I remember fake passing him a ball one time, and he still shot it. <laughs> so that's the only guy I've ever seen do that. But Travis wasn't, wasn't afraid to get shots up. And Joey, on the other hand, wasn't either. So I was probably a third-tier guy in terms of getting shots up. But most importantly, these guys would compete. Joey, you're <laughs> laughing. Is, is that true? Is Lance, was Lance the third-tier guy? I'm, I'm going to probably go the other way. and say He was probably the first-tier guy manufacturing shots. Um, and he, he would find a way to get that ball up no matter what. Uh, so yeah, I think I was probably a third tier guy if we really look back on it. And uh, Travis probably in the middle getting them pimps up, but Lance didn't mind the shot. <laughs> I kind of get the feeling about that. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, for for Joey to say Lance didn't mind shooting, I mean, you're in full agreement with that, right, with uh, that, you Travis. Kidding me? I thought we, we said we was going to be honest when we came here and talked about how it actually happened for Lance to sit up here and say he actually 
fake past me, that's probably true. Because passing me was probably what he, Joy will attest to this. There wasn't a shot Lance absolutely did not want to take. He wanted to take my shots. He wanted to take Joey's shots. And he tried to do it his share. And and if memory serves, now you guys correct me if I'm wrong about this. And, and in that year, and the numbers are shown there, Travis averaged 24 a game. Lance averaged 20. Joey just under 20 points per game. But, Joey, you're the one that had 46 against Stetson, which was kind of the return home game for Travis to his area, and you, and you had 46 that night. Oh, Travis got sick that night. That, that's uh, One of them was sick. Well, Travis or Lance, one of you guys was sick. No, I, I, um, Lance, I was sick. I was sick. Lance was sick. So well, Travis was in the game like that Lance night against him. Yeah, I think they, they, they paid Travis a lot of attention. They were running, running box and one or something on Travis and left me, left me over on the wing a little bit too, too often. And um, I got a few shots up as a result. Uh, one thing, Joey, because I know you have limited time with us before you have to take off. I did want to ask you, now that you're the co a coach and the coach of the Adelaide 36ers, what from your college days at the University of Texas and as a player do you employ as a coach now at the professional level in Australia? You know, one of the things, one of the things I try to do is, and I, and I think we did a good job of it, is challenging every part person on the team to be a part of the team. You know, some guys get four or five minutes and some might play 30, 40 minutes, but challenging each person to be a part of the team and, and find a way to infect the team in some positive way, no matter what. You know, we do play a run-and-gun style of basketball. We're, we're known for scoring a lot of points. Um, I've been a head coach here for 13 seasons now, and we've led the league in scoring 12 of that 13 times. So we do get up and down the court. And, do, um, and play a fun style of basketball. Do, do your guys who play for you know about your playing days? Do you Have you told them about your playing days? Do they know what, what a, a prolific player you were I, I, at UT? I tell, them as, I tell them as much as I can, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, know, we, uh, you know, we joke, but, you know, these guys with the, with the you know, Internet era, they, they go and Google and grab information, and, you know, they, they've grabbed snippets and, and we're doing video sessions, and they go, oh, coach, let me show you this, and pop it in as, you know, me running down the court a lot lighter than I was, I am now. But, yeah, they, they, they do have a pretty good idea of what I did back in, back in the college. Could, could you guys envision when you were playing with Joey him being a coach, Travis? I could. Yeah. I mean, uh, Joey is, ex ex as well as Lance, extremely competitive. Uh, so the details of what Joey and Lance did – in their everyday preparation to, to practice a play. But Joey was a, a floor general. Uh, he wanted to lead, and he was always trying to help other players, especially some of our bigs. He would go over and have conversations with them. So you could see that coaching in Joey at the time that we played together. Absolutely. Yeah, no question. Uh, and, and Travis alike. Uh, I mean, this was a perfect blend of guys uh, that were competitive, uh, very intelligent, not only uh, about the game of basketball, but in a general way. Um, and so the fact that, I mean, one, that we're all still involved in the sport and the game at some level, and all have had success post-UT, uh, and two of the three of us are coaches, is absolutely no surprise at all. Joey, do you miss much about the States? How often do you get back to, to the U.S.? Uh, I come back twice a year, and, you know, and obviously Miss Austin. I, I still think it's one of the best cities, um, you know, in the world. It's, it's, a, it's a really good place, so I do miss it, and uh, I'll definitely make that my home when, when I finish up here. All right. Hey, I know you've got to catch a flight to New Zealand, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll press on in a less exotic locale, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time, Joey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on the program. No problem. Thanks, and uh, good catching up with you guys. We'll catch up when I get back. Okay, Jay. Good luck to you, man. <laughs> good luck, hey, Joey. Tell them how we came up with the BMW store, the name, too. <laughs> That's coming up next. That'll be coming up next. <laughs> Joey Wright joining us from Australia. Uh, we'll continue with Longhorn Weekly when we continue here in a moment. Travis Mays and Lance Blanks joining us here. Joey Wright, the third member of that BMW group, was with us earlier in the program joining us from Australia. Okay, first of all, let's start with that, the whole BMW thing. Who wants to take that and talk about the, the evolution, the naming of it? Well, I'm going to let Lance do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember. And, you know, Joey, he's smooth. He's Joey of the yeah. group, uh, I would say, 
Joey's he's probably the more of the businessman. And uh, that's a nice I, way of putting it. Like, that's yeah. a nice way. <laughs> or the business end of it, right? The end, business end of it, and and, and good at it, I might add. Yeah, and, yeah uh, absolutely. So Joey, one day he just he comes to practice, and uh, I remember we were in the locker room. He's like, "Hey, hey, guys, you know, you know, you." Last name starts with a B, and Travis' last name starts with an M, and mine starts with a W. He said, you know, we could be like, and mind you, these guys like to score. Uh, we could be like BMW, the ultimate scoring machine. Because for those who don't know, the, the ad campaign at that time for the automobile BMW was the ultimate driving machine. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. That's right. And so I, I honestly, I was like, okay, that ain't going to work. <laughs> and so Joey keeps pushing it in his, in his uh, competitive and persistent way, and he pushes it, pushes it, pushes it. And uh, we got this friend of ours to uh, make up T-shirts. Yeah. And uh, now <laughs> I hope <laughs> the NCAA can't be retroactive in their penalties, but uh, T-shirts were made up, and um, and then exploded. <laughs> yeah, they exploded. they they sold them, went out, sold the T-shirts. And I was like, you sold it. Like, we ran out of t shirts. And then the next thing we knew, literally, it was just a wave across the, the nation. I, I have friends today and who literally, I'll be in the airport or whatever, I see somebody and BMW. I mean, I, they're probably familiar with that more so than, than our names individually. By the time you guys got to Reunion Arena in Dallas for the Southwest Conference tournament, it was it was a phenomenon. Everybody knew about that, and then it was really. And I, I remember this as as a reporter being there at Reunion Arena. It was all set up as being BMW versus Forty Minutes of Hell, <laughs> yeah. because Nolan Richardson had Arkansas going that year, and that was that was the 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 one that, that trying to break through the ceiling in that you wind up playing them first of all in the finals of the Southwest Conference tournament I know that didn't go the way you wanted no absolutely did not go the way we wanted Arkansas has been a thorn in my side Lance <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a lot of respect for those guys because it was a great team many many talented players Coach Nolan Richardson great coach but they had the depth that we didn't have yeah they had about in my opinion they had five six pros legitimate pros on that team. And uh, we just kind of ran out of bodies to match up against them. And it was the showdown. Unfortunately, they got, they got the nod to advance. And, and they won that game pretty handily. But it was the rematch, and we'll get to that in a moment a, a, at the time. So Longhorns go in to uh, the, the NCAA tournament, I believe is a 10 seed. And you're starting off with Georgia in, in the first game. First game, and you're playing at what was then known as the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, later the RCA Dome that isn't around anymore. And Lance, uh, it, it was almost like everybody was sitting back and watching Travis do his thing when he had he had the huge first game, including from the free throw line. Oh, Travis was amazing in that game. Uh, he carried us uh, offensively, especially. Uh, and uh, he was also, I think, putting a little money in his pocket for that NBA, which I was <laughs> proud and happy to see because, you know, you're on the national stage in the NCAA tournament, and, um, you know, we're playing in, in Indiana there, where their fans are just amazing when it comes to basketball and the tournament. And, um, I mean, we, that was the other thing that was great about this team. I think when someone really had it going, and Travis, Travis often did, we rallied around that and really immersed ourselves and enjoyed the moment as teammates. If I remember correctly, Travis, I know you would know, so correct me if I remember, you were 23 or 27 from the free throw line. Yes. And wound up 40 points. 44. 44, excuse me, in the ball game. Yes. I knew you would know. Uh, 44. And so then it's Purdue, the number two seed in that Midwest region. The crowd was over 40,000 and, and, and largely Purdue fans. Absolutely. And, and, Take us through that down in the waning moments of that contest. Well, they had home court advantage, as you just mentioned. Now, we were playing right there in, in Indianapolis. Uh, I have to say this about our team. We had so much we wanted to prove. Uh, Lance, myself, Joey, Lance, and I having our senior year, knowing this was our last run, we had to leave everything out on the table. So we was given everything. We, we didn't leave anything on the court that night. But it came down to one possession. They had the last possession with time running off the clock. And everyone thought myself, Lance, uh, or Joy would be the ones that would be determining factor of who won that basketball game. But it was Panama Myers. Mm -hmm. 
Tony Jones, I'll never forget it, broke through. We was, Coach Penders, the entire coaching staff made it very, very clear that we were not to foul. So we tried to get in front of him as much as we could, but when he released it, I'm standing there, we all were frozen. The only person that didn't freeze on our team was Panama Myers, and he went up and he made an absolutely phenomenal, game-changing, life-changing for me and probably you too, block. And we went crazy, because we ended up winning that game. And, and also, Coach Gene Cady went crazy, but he went crazy on the referees. And, <laughs> yes. You know, he thought it was an unfair call, but looking back at that, it was a legitimate call. 73-72 the final. Now, return to Reunion Arena for the Sweet 16. It's Xavier, down 15 in the first half, and it's Lance's turn to take over, if memory serves. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, it's it's sort of like what Joey said on the phone. Uh, it was rarely going to be one of us who had a good, a good game, or only one of us. It was usually going to be two of the three, or three of the three. And uh, I, I just I remember vividly. Get, I get chills talking about it. And you know, you mentioned uh, Indianapolis and what Panama did, and it's just amazing going back in our mind thinking about these moments, but. In this case, in reunion, um, we were struggling, and we, I remember going in at halftime, and Coach Penders was very calm, very poised, and uh, and very calm. And uh, I did I wasn't aware of this at the time, but but Joey uh, told me that Coach Penders told him at, at halftime when we were coming out of the uh, back on the court, so you're gonna win this game, we're gonna win this game. I just want you to know that. And so uh, we go back and. Um, I don't know, just uh, from, by the grace of God and uh, a strike of lightning. Uh, as you said, I caught fire. Yep. And uh, that was probably one of the only games I can remember where I was absolutely selfish at different points <laughs> during that game. I remember. I object. <laughs> yeah, you object to that. But in I that, object. But in that game, Travis, you guys just, you let him carry it because you, you had the feeling when he was hot, he was going to go. Oh, absolutely. I mean. We knew, as Lance mentioned earlier, anyone could get it going. We knew Lance got it going. He gave us the, he, he initiated uh, us getting that run, and he took off. He just started making shots. And then you're talking about a comeback that, that just, it shocked the country, and it shocked Austin, Texas, because after that game, I know I'm jumping ahead, but we got phone calls of what was going on in Austin <laughs> yeah. after we came back and beat Xavier by being down so many points at halftime. And they said it was phenomenal. We actually, me and Lance was in the room and we was getting these messages of what was going on in Austin <laughs> on the drag. We were hoping we could get back here <laughs> to enjoy what everybody in Austin was feeling. But it, it was an incredible feeling to, to feel that type of support. And then Elite Eight, one more time with Arkansas. And this was a much different game, even though it wound up being on the disappointing end. You guys fought them tooth and nail. And correct me if I'm wrong. Travis, 88-85 is a final. But you had a shot. You had a look, and it went off the front of the rim that would have tied it and sent it overtime in the waning seconds. Ooh, you're talking about you get chills talking about certain things, Lance. This is talking about that shot. It had a chance to to hit a three-pointer, either to tie it or – To tie would have sent it overtime. To have sent the game in overtime. I remember taking the shot, and as it left my finger, I, I could tell that it was going to be short. So I immediately chased that, that ball down and lunged for already having four fouls. So as I went up, I never saw Allen Bowers or whoever it was underneath me, and I went over and I got my fifth foul trying to get that offensive rebound. And as I did, I just went to the floor and laid there. Because at that time, and I don't know how that happened, Lance, but I was able to realize that that was going to be my last shot of my career at the University of Texas because we was now eliminated from the tournament because we was down and I had just fouled out. So I actually laid there, and I don't know how long I laid there. Evidently, they thought it was too long because Coach Pitness came from the bench and came out there and asked me, was I okay? And these are the words that I shared with them. I said, Coach, you, do you recognize that I just took my last shot of my career? And I think I shocked him because he immediately put his hand on my back and he said, okay, just lay here for a second there. Yeah. And when he said that, uh, I did it, and I eventually got up slowly, and the game proceeded, and, you know, the rest is history. And I still not like in Arkansas for that. <laughs> it's a shame because had you won that game, you would have played Georgia Tech, a very similar type team in the, in the Final Four, in the semifinals. You might have had a 
chance to win that one. Yeah, and we had actually beat them the year before, didn't we? Exactly. Yeah. We beat them. Actually, uh, if I remember right, we beat them in reunion. Yeah. Yeah, we beat them in reunion <laughs> arena. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wow. Uh, all right. Uh, Travis and Lance will stay with us, and we'll uh, have Coach Barnes rejoin us as well when Longhorn Weekly continues here in a moment. Back on Longhorn Weekly, Isaiah Taylor with a drive to the bucket and one that pulled the Longhorns to within four late in the contest against West Virginia. When you when you look back at some of those highlight videos and you see that, you see maybe a little bit of, of some of that aggressiveness that you see in Isaiah as he drove to the bucket on that play right there. Well, these guys, you know, I like what these guys talking about toughness, how they get out and play. I like that. I mean, you know, uh, you said y'all just play. What do you mean by that when you get out there? Okay, in practice, you, you controlled everything. But when it came game time and we put the fans in the stands, Coach, we couldn't hear you. Once we got between the lines, we played. And you know what? The best teams I've had, that's how they play. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. You know, because they go out and they're ready to go, and, and they do that. And, uh, but, you know, I thought it was interesting. Joey said uh, that when he is done in, in Australia, that he's coming back to Austin to live and, you know, you make yep. it your home. and. So being here in Austin in Texas, I know, and, and one thing, you all three guys graduated on time and, mm -hmm. and have certainly done everybody proud here. And uh, what are your thoughts about looking back at being at Texas and now where you are today? Coach, when I look back at my time at Texas, it, 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 I think it made me the man that I am. I mean, it got me prepared uh, to be a husband, to be a father, uh, to graduate was something that was extremely important for me. I was the first in my family to do it. Uh, but I think me, Lance, and Joey, we all made each other better in everything that we did. Uh, they were good in the classroom. They were professional about how they conducted themselves, and, and I watched that. And being so competitive, you didn't, I didn't want Lance to outdo me in anything, and neither did I want Joey to outdo me. So it was one of those things I think we helped everyone get through and be successful here our four years in college. Yeah, for, for me, uh, I mean, it, it's always been my foundation and my gateway to the next chapter in my life. Uh, I started out at the University of Virginia and as soon as I could, got back home. And uh, you know, my dad, he said, hey, you need to look at Texas. And come to Texas and three years later, uh, I have a degree and I'm being drafted into the NBA by the NBA champs. And each year, uh, I'd come back and, and stay close to the university. Uh, then I'd go on to be an executive in the NBA for 14, 15 years. And, I have no doubt it's because of my time in, in coming here and being in this, this environment, uh, meeting the people I met and, and being taught the things that I was taught. So I think, you, I think you're absolutely crazy if, you would, if you're a high level athlete to consider a school outside of the state of Texas if, again, this is where you grew up and this is what's in your blood. I would agree with that. What, what about the other guys on your teams? I mean, at, during the reunion that we have in the fall, those guys come back, and one of the players I heard you guys were talking about who said they never shot the ball, you know, never got the ball, rebounded. Cool. But how about some Alvin, of those guys? Alvin Higgs, Alvin Lyon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. He's just not telling the truth. He was a black hole. So yeah. what we tried to do was keep the ball away from Alvin as much as possible because when we pass it into the post, relocating for what? Why would you relocate? Yeah. It's not coming back out. But, no, nah, Coach, to talk about those guys, they're all family. I mean – the time that we spent together here, there was hard times, but there were growing times. And, and uh, I could say from my heart uh, that they made me a better player, a better man, and I love them all for that. You know, we all love Eddie Orrin. You guys have got to give me one good story about Eddie Orrin. That's something that uh, it has got to be a good Where do you start? Story. There's no one. It's not one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I got one, uh, a small one. Uh, uh, Coach Orrin. One of my favorite people of all time, uh, not only as a, as a coach, but in, in, in the sport and outside of the sport. He's just a great, great person. And uh, I remember, <coughs> I, I can hear his voice so well, that's how I can do his. Uh, <laughs> that drawl, that, that Tennessee drawl. That, that Tennessee drawl. Uh, it, the game was going on, I think it was Joey. And, um, and, and Eddie's like, Joey, Joey. Joey, and you know, he's getting louder and louder, and you don't know, like, this has got to be really important. Joey, 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 I said, What, coach? Dr. Chardin. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> sounds like something EO would do. Lance, Travis, thanks for joining us. Appreciate the time. Yes. All right. Lance Blanks, Travis Mays joining us. Coach Barnes and I will return when Longhorn Weekly continues here on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn IMG Radio Network. <laughs>